What's up, this is Insanity, and today I'm hanging out with Sano out here in Chinatown, Los Angeles. And today he's gonna be teaching you guys some basics on tagging. Yo, what's up, everybody? That's right, my name is Sano, S A N O, also known as Sano Ism. A simple art, nice outline, sunny and nice outside. Uh, stealth Assassin Ninja Operation. Styles always number one. I represent three different crews uh, CST, RTN, and What Crew. Uh, that's uh, Cleveland Scribe Tribe, Rockin' the Nation, and We Hate All Toys. I've been doing uh, graffiti since 1983, and um, you know, I, I uh, do this thing properly known as graffiti, what we call writing or style writing. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about uh, tagging, maybe cover a little bit of history, um, and just try to show you how to have a, a stylish tag. Uh, and with that said, I guess we can get started. Yo, what's up? Um, just wanted to show you guys a few uh, samples, basic stuff, a little basic tag. So just a little bit of history here, you know, again, I started painting in 83, uh, but I think tagging's been around since the beginning of recorded history. So that's the beginning of writing. Uh, but more formally, I think, uh, you know, like New York City style tagging, it probably goes into like the uh, mid, mid to late 60s. Uh, West Coast style tagging uh, claims to be maybe a little bit before that, probably even as, as early as the 40s and stuff like that with uh, the Mexican kind of placas, uh, name tags and stuff like that. So there's a lot of debate there. Um, but again, I started tagging in 1983 after seeing a piece that said hip hop don't stop. So these are some of my basic kind of drippy tags and stuff, little stack letters and stuff. I like to also practice doing full alphabets. This is important because you don't want to not be able to do a certain letter. This is of a pretty straightforward style though right here. Um, you can call it a straight letter style. Here's a few examples of a just uh, some different styles, different hand styles, if you will. Um, and the thing with uh, lettering styles is you want to like, you know, have like a good flow to your name. So we'll get into all that in a moment. Um, keep in mind, you know, there's some uh, there's some mechanics to the letters. I have an old English style example here. There's parts to the letters here, like the these uh, headers and footers or these uh, caps on the tops and bottoms are called serifs so you want to figure out you know if your letters are serif or sans serif or without the serif. Also you know there's the body of the letter, there's the baseline, just some things to keep in mind when you're trying to uh, figure out how to you know make your letters proportion and make your tag look really balanced and everything. Uh, just some more examples. More, uh, more old English calligraphy style, and then more of the tagging style. This would be like a more West Coast kind of style thing here. This is like a cursive style, some vertical stack letter, one-liners. And again, just some um, basic practice. Now here, you know, I uh, want to show like, you know, this is kind of typically what you learn in school or whatnot. You, you learn how to do printed lettering. You learn how to do cursive lettering. So today I'm gonna, get into tagging styles and how to make your styles look a little fresher. And what I'm showing here is there is a printed style and then there's also like a cursive style and stuff within tagging. So tagging, it's like dancing with letters. I love letters, right? So let's get down. That's how my basic tag goes. You can see this, Put this thing on. So that's my basic tag. We have here, uh, of course you see this S-A-N-O, I have a five point star in my O. Historically speaking, uh, this used to drop down into a infinity sign and then drop into this art, at, and into the heart as an anchor. Within the quotes, with a halo over it. I tend to break my name down into acronyms and stuff. You know, like I said, style's always number one. And things like that, you know, simple art, nice outline, sunny and nice outside. And then with the star and the halo, and the heart, you know, these are all just different things that kind of express, I guess, my personality or something like that. 
so let's, let's do a few more here. This will be more of a cursive style. With the arrow. And uh, notice I'm not really taking a whole lot of time, you know, and uh, trying to sketch out the letters. It is, a, it is a signature, so I'm signing it. You want to balance uh, speed and style. So you don't want to do this too slow. You want to do... Different iteration. So that way you see the... Uh, now I'm using a little nuclear atom symbol in the heart. What I'm using here too, I have the second piece of paper under here as my blotter page, so as the ink goes through this piece of paper, it'll uh, be blotted on this page. Also have different types of markers, make a lot of difference. So we have calligraphy or chisel style markers. We have classic, you know, fat markers. And we have uh, drippy blotters. So this is all uh, just basic stuff here. You can practice with pens, pencils, brush tip markers and stuff. They all have their different qualities and stuff to it. I guess let's just start off with pencils. Basic stuff. Um, we'll go through a printed alphabet. So some things that I'm doing here are some things I want to keep uh, in mind um, because you, of course you know the the basic stuff between like print it and cursive and stuff so some of the drills that I, I like to keep in mind that uh, we should touch on is how to lean your letters back or forth right so sometimes I, I kind of do you know do these kind of things do drills where I'm just you know down strokes leaning back or up or leaning forward down up forwards right uh, let's see these will be counterclockwise leaning forward circles leaning back overhand oh, maybe i need to practice that more <laughs> um, but you get the idea these are basic components of, of lettering uh, so when you get into taking your, let's say, an, an A for example. That's a basic A. I'll just make it even more basic. Boom, right? Um, so I lean it back, I practice this kind of thing. Maybe I wanna make it more block style, like that. Curve it out a little bit. Let's say we can you know, lean it forward. We do this kind of stuff because it's like, you never know how your letters are gonna fit. So this will make sense a little later when we pull it all together. Um, but I want to sh show you how the letters are, are kind of bouncing from leaning back to forward here. Uh, so I like to do letter drills and how, how, how many different ways I can do a certain letter, including upper and lowercase lettering and stuff. So maybe, you know, if I don't even want to get into lowercase a's, you know, I'm trying to loosen up. I'm not trying to, you know, like, Usually you might do an A and it's like really like, really thought out, really rigid kind of stuff like this. Uh, here you just wanna just kind of loosen up. Get a lowercase A flow on, or even with these kind of ascenders. So yeah, letters have ascenders and descenders. Uh, that's the top parts of the letters or the bottom parts like on a G, J, or Q or something like that. You know, again, there's body casing. That's the casing of the, of the letter. So if you look at a line of type and you see something like A, let's see, we're gonna do A, B, C, D, E, G. So, so this is the body of the, of the lettering here. And then these are ascenders and these are descenders. Okay, this is important because as we get to pushing and pulling these letters, Right, um, let's do a B. We wanna, see I'm always trying to start off with something styly, right? I mean, cause you know, the, you know the basic B, it's more like that, but I want it to, I want my Bs to kinda 
flow one way or the other, or you know, so this is more curvy, this is more blocky. But I'm stretching it out in different points, in different directions. These extenders here start turning into calligraphic kind of additions to the letter. So maybe I start doing little swashes like, like that. Let's see a C. Different iterations of C's. Has this uh, kind of corner in the top. Uh, this would be a serif C, these two in there. Um, you know, again, you can lean them forward or lean them backwards or forwards because uh, you never know how you're going to fit these letters together later on. D's. line here lowercase d's so just some different stuff going on there E's I like a lot because they're really fun to play with. So of course your basic E, and then if you start kind of pulling this, stretching it around, or I kind of like doing these like, like that, kind of more of a calligraphy style E's. So um, maybe some notes on just some boot, uh, some brush calligraphy kind of stuff in there too because uh, I like to keep that in mind here. Um, so, interesting thing with the with brush styles is, you know, for me I connect the, the brush uh, styles to um, kind of like Chinese calligraphy or, you know, Japanese uh, Shoto uh, style brush calligraphy. This is a cheap brush because it is a marker. Some of the, uh, you know, of course, if this was a real brush and ink and everything, it, it, there's a lot of uh, technique involved there so far as like pressure. So how you lay the brush down and how you pull the stroke and how you give it, uh, like you give it a thick and thin or you give it a light and heavy pressure to give it this thick and thinness about the, the lettering. Kind of sloppy because I'm thinking too hard here. Let's uh, do another one. Flow with it a little bit better. So, a lot of different pressure involved here. If you see how I'm fitting different letters together, I started off with the uppercase A and I have lowercase A's in here. I guess this could be a lowercase N or what I think of as a backwards uppercase N. And actually what I'll do is I'll show you a little bit of how my style or my tag actually developed even from when I started tagging, maybe my tag was more like doing stuff like this. My style is more kind of a East Coast style, even though I'm from Cleveland, but I like all kind of styles from all over the world and everything. Uh, I would also say like, you know, maybe Philly style is a good style to check out too and do on the wickets. And wickets are kind of based on uh, calligraphy, calligraphy and cursive. Uh, and it's so let's say, Uh, 
That one's kind of sloppy. Let's do another one. So the first one up here we lost control, the bottom one here is a, a, lot, a lot cleaner. So far as uh, Philly Wicket styles, uh, they're really thin, skinny, and very tall. Uh, usually when you're doing this kind of tag, they're, uh, they're, as, they're from the ground to as high as you can reach up. Another iteration of that, uh, probably a style that is not so popular but it's out there and if you get a chance to uh, see it, things that I like to do is throw in like these little hearts. That's, so the style tends to evolve into kind of a wild style where you're adding extra elements and here uh, each letter has its own heart but there's a lot of overlap in here so I know it gets kind of hard to read. For folks that do a lot of this kind of stuff we can kind of piece it together so to speak. Maybe maybe kind of the west coast Plaka style is really uh, heavily based on uh, Old English calligraphy. I am not a gangster, but the gangsters have their own style. Again, really heavily based on uh, Old English calligraphy. So this is more of a West Coast style. This is definitely more, these are definitely more East Coast styles. Let's get some fat marker stuff going on here. I got a calligraphy tip, chisel tip, so it's thinner and wider. Wide and thin, thick and thin. Calligraphy tips, good for doing calligraphy. Uh, so you kind of see this kind of thing where you follow the chop. So tagging has its roots in calligraphy. Um, I'm doing the scramble, Soul Train scramble board version of my name, so it's uh, not in order. You have to figure it out. So there's that kind of thing with the calligraphy tips. Definitely urge you know folks to you know, research different styles, different writing styles and incorporate it into your tag. So, you know, that marker. Arrows, hearts, maybe, maybe my crew. you know definitely like stuff like that so I'll just do some straight uh, actually because we have the grippy blotter too these can get messy because you can squeeze them and they'll drip roll it up Flat right there. Oh, ink, ink. oh yeah, feeling that. <laughs> That's a basic tag. Now, what you do with it is up to you. These aren't the rules. These are just guidelines, and uh, hopefully something that you can follow in developing your own style, because that's the key. Okay, so with all of that said, some simple assignments that you guys can do. Again, are the straight lettering. If you have a fat marker, I would suggest doing like, you know, just full page. Just keep a stack of regular copy paper and do the whole full page deal like that. You know, and just keep the style consistent. Keep it clean, start up, you know, keep it real basic, clean, simple, readable styles that you're comfortable with and then start exploring the wilder, 
uh, kind of calligraphy and stuff, I would definitely say explore this kind of thing where you're doing print styles to the wild styles. So you develop a range of different styles, uh, take up the whole paper, turn your practice into a uh, play, basically. Because uh, if you're not having fun doing it, it, it'll show through your letters. So don't limit yourself, have fun with it and keep styling on them.